Hi, this is Eric Strunk with Welcome to Control Talk. My guest today is Jim Lawfrey from Logical Lighting Controls. Jim, welcome to Atlanta. Thank you, Eric. I am happy to be here. Well, great. Well, you know, I met you probably about three or four months ago. You came in with a great product, and more interesting, that was a very interesting story. Tell our viewers about you and what your, you know, sort of your path to Logical Lighting and, and the products you've come out with. I've been in the lighting business for 40 some odd years and my passion has been lighting control and a way to control lighting without using dimmers. And Logical Lighting Controls owns several patents on microprocessor controlled lighting products. So tell me about Logical Lighting Controls. What do you guys do? Logical Lighting Controls builds microprocessor controlled uh, lighting products, ballasts and switches for uh, every kind of lighting, LED lighting, metal halide, fluorescent, and um, any kind of lighting you want. Well, and so for our viewers who are primarily in the HVAC industry, it seems like the intersection for us is going to be energy savings, lighting control and buildings. To tell our viewers, I mean, if they don't know, typically out of an energy bill, how much does lighting make up of an energy bill? In, in your energy bill, approximately 75% of the electrical usage in a normal building goes for lighting. Since lighting makes up such a huge part of an energy bill, Jim, I mean, does, is, is that amount of lighting necessary or is there, you know, how do, you know, is there savings there? And, and if so, why? Yes, there is a lot of room for savings because a majority of the buildings are overlit. A lot of the buildings built in 1960s and 70s and 80s when electricity was penny cheap uh, and the IES, uh, Illuminating Engineering Society, was recommending 100 foot candles for office lighting. Wow. Now that um, recommendation is 30 foot candles. And so it, there's a lot of extra light being used and the ability to save energy uh, comes from turning off lights. Wow, and so it's a little bit like in a car with uh, gas prices, it's a little bit like having your car in neutral and having the gas pedal all the way down when you're just sitting at a stop sign and you just need to be, be, be revving it. So you just that, total wasted energy. That is, that's a very good analogy, yes. Okay, so, you know, we hear about lighting control and obviously like, you know, we're sitting outside in our foyer here, you know, we got a big window out there we're looking at, you know, about three or four o'clock, that uh, the sun's gonna come down, we're gonna get a lot of light coming in there, so we wouldn't need to necessarily have our lights on here, correct? Right. Or, or at least not at the same level. Right, and we have photo sensors, uh, daylight harvesting, that measure the light and then turn off individual lamps in the fixture wow. to maintain a light level. Um, yeah. So, so, so if I need 50 foot candles here, for example, then basically what we're doing is we're turning stuff off, on and off, lights, fixtures on and off to compensate as the light comes in, which equates to if I turn half my lights off, I've saved 50% of the energy, uh, of the energy right here in this, in this foyer, which is, which is cool. So that, that technology is called light harvesting. Okay, so, you know, one of the things, Jim, that really impresses me about you and I want our viewers to know is these products that your company is selling you're actually the guy that invented most of them, is that true? Yes, that is true. I got involved in the lighting business after I was in theater in college. Yes. And I operated the lights, and in those days we used the big auto transformer dimmers, and I figured that there had to be a better way. I got involved and, and started a company called Stage Bright, and we did theatrical lighting. We were one of the first companies to use SCRs and um, electronic control, digital control of dimmers. And in the early 90s, I tried... Now, hang on a second. got to stop you right there because I know the question that's on our viewers' minds is... Okay. So who is the most famous person you ever lit? Elvis Presley. You lit Elvis Presley? Yes. No I, way! I ran the lights the night Elvis opened at the International Hotel in Las Vegas oh my uh, in 1968. Oh my goodness. So you saw lots of women's underwear coming up on the stage. And how did you like that too? <laughs> well, it was, it was uh, 
I was a little uh, away from that. I was up in the control room yeah. uh, running the lights, but uh, yes, I do have pictures of that. Oh, wow. And what, what was Elvis, what was it like? Was it a good show? It was a terrific show. He was a fantastic entertainer, yeah. and uh, lighting played a big part. That was the first 2,500-seat auditorium in Las Vegas and uh, he filled the place. Wow. Did you get to meet him or did you just get no, to light him? I yeah. didn't get to yeah. meet him. Well, wow. So what colors, lighting colors make Elvis look best? Uh, pink and red. Pink and red. There you go. So where else in the controls industry can you buy your lighting controls from a gentleman that not only invented the product, but lit Elvis Presley? So that's pretty cool. Okay, so from there, you know, after 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 obviously your rock and roll years, lighting Elvis and doing the film, the the film lighting. What did you do next? We Stage Bright made theatrical lighting, and we did provide the lighting for Mick Jagger and the Rolling Stones on their 1972 tour. No way! I was I was on stage at Minneapolis Met Center. Yeah. And ran the lights uh, for that show. And wow. Stevie Wonder was the warm-up act for oh, Mick Jagger. Oh my goodness! Oh I my goodness! I did goodness. get to meet both Mick Jagger and Stevie Wonder. So, so I mean, what are they like? Uh, it was loud. Yeah. It was uh, several hundred yeah. decibels yeah. and uh, very, very bright. Okay, so you know, I'm a big Mick Jagger fan. So Mick, I mean, no respect here, but you know, when you see people lit properly, they look a lot taller than they are. And you know, I guess being up on stage, so so just stop me when I get to Mick Jagger's height, okay? So is he this tall? No, just he's say when. A little taller. About there. There you go, guys. So I'm guessing that's about four feet, two inches tall, and he is like a sex symbol. So there you go. This is why you need to have good lighting control. Jim, can you make our control text as sexy as Mick Jagger with your lighting? I would work on it. <laughs> Did he, was he a pretty nice guy? Yes, very yeah, nice. Yeah, he is cool. I understand he's one of right. the hardest working guys ever. He, he had more energy on stage yeah. uh, than you could believe. Yeah, I actually met a guy who was his uh, voice coach when he was in the United States and said he's the most disciplined guy you'd ever meet. He says he, he runs every day, he exercises, he watches what, what he eats, and he goes to bed early. So, right. you know, go figure, go figure. Well, okay, so, so, so you, you did that, so, so what happened next? In about 1995, I could see that the energy uh, usage in this country was skyrocketing and costs were going up, and I wanted to find a more efficient way of controlling lighting. Oh, say more about that. The, the uh, dimming of incandescent lighting uh, requires that you use SCRs and a toroidal choke and, and they produce a lot of heat and they make all kinds of noise. If you need to control it or measure it, Stromquist and Company has a control solution for you. With over $2 million of inventory between our Georgia and Florida locations, an easy to use online ordering platform, same day shipping, and a factory trained team of controls experts to answer your questions, Stromquist and Company continues in its tradition of offering great service and great products.